Let's take a model railroad freight car right out of the box and make it look like the real thing. I'm Andy Dorsch and this is my entry in the Ron's Trains and Things Down and Dirty Weathering Contest number two. Over on my channel, Viewers chose my entry and voted in the Walther's 40-foot UTLX 16,000-gallon funnel flow tank car. I've never weathered a tank car, so I knew this would be a fun challenge. If you want to see more model railroad content from me, subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon so you don't miss any videos that I put up. In the prototype, or the real world, these tank cars were manufactured by Union Tank Car and were used to haul heavy, dense liquids liquids such as asphalt, corn syrup, oil, and specifically what my car hauled, kale and clay. So you may ask what is kale and clay? Kale and clay is a soft uh, clay that is essentially the ingredient in china and porcelain and is widely used in making paper, rubber, paint, drywall, and other products. I wanted to make sure that I captured the prototype as best I could. The rails and ladders on the model are painted white, and in the prototype of the real world on the Engelhard cars, they were two-toned, black and white, and the railings, when below the equator of the car, were black, and when they were above, they were white. On this particular car, they were black, so I need to paint them black. I use Model Master flat black paint and a micro brush to apply paint to the handrails and ladders. This is a pretty delicate process, so you want to take your time to make sure that you get it right. And as you can see here, I'm not using any uh, masking tape, so don't use too much uh, paint on the micro brush. That way you don't splatter or sputter or leave paint where you don't want it. Again, very careful, very delicate operation here. So you want to make sure to take your time, go slow, and do it right. Once the handrail paint has dried, I want to apply my initial coat of dull coat. So I use the rattle can stuff, and I swear by this, I've never had any problems with it at all. So I stay about 12 inches away from the model, and I just do a couple of passes on each side, and I'll rotate the model. I make sure I cover all of it, but I don't soak the model either. It shouldn't be dripping with dull coat. You just want to have light uh, coats here, and less is more in this case. Using prototype picture again here, I want to get a feel for the color of the trucks and the side frames. As you can see here, they're not your common black, they're a little bit lighter. So I'm going to take some Rust-Oleum Automotive Primer, the dark gray, and I'm going to spray the truck's side frames here just to kind of tone down the black. Our next step here is we're going to take some uh, alcohol and flat white paint and apply a fade to the model. I'm using my good old trusty Binks airbrush here um, and I mix it 10% paint, 90% alcohol using 91% alcohol. And I stay about 6 inches away from the model and you'll note that I'm also spraying the model at a downward angle to mimic the effects of UV from the sun coming in not at a top-down angle. So again, keep about six inches away from the model and you don't want to blast it and overcoat here. Light coats, multiple passes, get the job done. Again, less is more. So I was getting a little impatient with the airbrush and I figured I'd step it up a notch. I had been experimenting with using pan pastels to apply a fade, so I'm taking some titanium white and I'm going to apply it to the whole model. So let me just get a good grip on the model here. And I'm just, again, top to bottom strokes here, 
for the pan pastel and I'm gonna just apply it to the one side so you can see the difference between the pan pastel fade and the airbrush fade. So as you can see here on the left is the pan pastel fade and the lettering for Engelhard is quite a bit lighter on the left as opposed to the right. So pan pastels saves the day again. We're still applying a fade here and I just want to smooth things out with this uh, dry paintbrush here. So again getting it all over the letters and um, all over the ladders. And once we're done with the fade we're going to go ahead and start applying some rust and grime. For this I'm using some Bragdon weathering powders. The color I chose was iron oxide and I'm starting at the top of the car and then once I get a line or a bead on that top seam I'm going to go ahead and use my paintbrush here again to kind of blend it all in. So you can see pulling straight down to mimic uh, rainwater rolling off the car and gravity and such. And then just kind of smoothing out so that there's really no hard lines. So I worked at this for about an hour taking the Bragdon powders and smoothing it around the car. Just to, so you don't you get a nice subtle even effect. Um, kind of and here we're going to go ahead and work on the top of the car near the hatches and the walkway and just getting a good coat of grime and rust and crud on there. So again, any excess, pulling down. We're also going to do the uh, walkways around the couplers and around the frame of the car. I used soot and uh, iron oxide brown here kind of give a kind of a dirty appearance where the wheels would be kicking up crud from the rails um, to the bottom of the car. So again, just take your time, have fun, make sure you smooth things out. That way you don't have globs of stuff just laying about. Again, less is more. And then taking the soot, we apply it to the walkways here to give the appearance that the paint is worn through. And then we go back and do a heavier coat on the seams. Once the, we get that on the top of the car, we'll come back in with our blending brush and just kind of blend it into the car. So it's not a sharp, it's a nice smooth transition. Once we get the grime all set, we'll seal it with some dull coat Again, staying about a foot away from the car so we don't blast off any of the powder or pastels that we've added prior. So once the dull coat's dried, we're going to go and do some seam highlights here. I'm going to use a micro brush with some Bragdon weathering powder. And we'll just kind of take our weathering powder with the brush here and draw it across the seams. And just follow them down and then really kind of highlight those seams where rust may rust and dirt may accumulate on a car and we'll lightly blend it out but we still want to have the marks be pretty heavy and then using the same process we'll add some wheel marks from where the wheels on the car kick up mud and dirt on the ends of the car as you can see in this prototype picture so just again using that micro brush just gingerly going back and forth and as you can see we got two skid marks on the end of the car here. What kale and clay tank car would not be without its lading spill? So we're going to go ahead and add a lading spill. I'm using pan pastels, burnt sienna tint, and I'm taking a paintbrush, dipping it in water, kind of almost using like a dry brush technique to kind of get that streaking in the pan pastel and then following that all the way straight down on the model and it kind of creates an effect of like 
uh, clay or dirt and grime was running down the side of the car. So I was really pleased with this technique. As you can see here, really, really shows the streaks as if it were just washed down the side of the car. If kale and clay was just washing down the side of the car. So this was kind of a neat technique. Pan pastels and a wet brush. Hey, get that hand out of there. I was really pleased with the outcome of the lading streaking on this uh, tank car. So uh, if you ever get a chance, try out the pan pastels and the wet brush technique. I bought this wheel mask from Micromark and I used the Ron's Trains and Things discount to get 10% off. So to paint these wheel sets, I used Krylon camouflage paint, uh, just the brown, ultra flat. I really like this stuff. I use it for wheel sets, painting my track, um, painting ties, the whole kit and caboodle. It's one of the tools you should have in your modeling toolkit. So do a little test spray here and then just lightly coat the wheels with the spray paint. Nothing too fancy here. I'm staying about six to eight inches away. Don't want to like overcoat it again. You don't want it running or anything like that. So just make sure you stay far enough away to keep the drips away. And again, less is more with this. So once the paint is dried, we come back in with some Bragdon weathering powder and just kind of blast that in the wheels there um, to really give it that nice, good, rusty texture. And we'll do it to both sides and just a quick loop around. Make sure it's evenly coated and really simulate that nice, rusty brown look. So this is it, the final result. Click on the playlist in the upper right-hand corner to see other great weathering videos in the Ron's Trains and Things Down and Dirty Weathering Contest. And make sure to make your way over to Midwest Model Railroad or MidwestModelRR.com to vote for your favorite contest entry.